This is the quick reaction show for the Seahawks versus the Bears week two as the Seahawks go down 24 to 17 to the Chicago Bears. I'm trying to look for a way to title this episode, Adam, because... Oh, I got I got a title for you. <laughs> do you have I got a title well, for you. I do. No. I do. No, this will make it real easy. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> we'll see. I, no, seriously, that's how you can entitle this episode. Well, that was stupid. I think that's a good title. I know that one of our listeners over in the UK, who, especially on a Monday night game where, you know, we can't expect our overseas listeners to get up at four or five in the morning to watch the game, right? No. I mean, we can't, we could. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> so I'm no. trying to do spoiler free titles and I, it's, it's a real struggle Look, with the I losses. Saw that e- <laughs> I saw that email about the idea of like, you know, the, the spoiler free titles would help out their life and who was it i can't remember who it was from the uk uh but i've read their message yeah um and point being is well time zones suck <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you man like it just ain't gonna happen because the title is, of uh the episode is well that was stupid because that's exactly what happened it was just stupidity you know it could be something about you know, the commitment to the run because holy smokes was that a theme throughout this game. Uh, tell me about all the stupidity <laughs> because that's, I mean, that's really where it all comes down to. I mean, we're doing this quick reaction, right? Like the game ended, what, five minutes ago? Right. And we get on the mic here. And my number one thing that I came away with was the idea that the Seahawks abandoned the run after their first drive in the game, which happened to be their most successful drive. Until they were in scramble mode. The very first three plays of the game were runs to Chris Carson. I want to say five of the first seven were runs to Chris Carson. At least four there were. Yeah. And it was it was back to back to back. And then they had a first down run where they got four yards. And, you know, it, apart from the issues with the running with the short passes, the receivers weren't helping Wilson out a whole lot either. Well, okay, so here's something that I wanted to spell right quick because one of our members on the Ring of Honor, and I'm not going to just call out their name and, and make them not feel uh, great about themselves because I, <laughs> I love Cameron. Yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> not, not to call Cameron out specifically. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But here's the thing. He's like, oh, Russ needs to get the ball out of his hands faster. Okay, to who? To who? Because that's the whole point. All these quick passes that he's supposed to be hitting, who is he supposed to be hitting? Not only that, but how about all that pressure up the middle, up the gut? Yeah. That's coming. There was that a lot of it. In, yeah. So exactly who is he supposed to hit? No one. No one. What worked was running the ball time and time again, where you could actually wear down that defense, where you could actually keep your defense, who played well off of the field, so that they're even more fresh. But no, Brian Schottenheimer could not be bothered to keep with the formula of running the ball throughout the first half. I don't even want to talk about the second half yet. I'm talking about the first half, where after the first drive, the next three drives, we have a run on first down for four positive yards. Four. You know what happens when you run the ball three times in a row and you gain four yards? I don't know. I don't know if you knew this, Brandon. That equals 12, and you end up with a first down. Yeah. All right. And what does he do? He goes completely away from it. The next three drives after the first drive, run for four yards on first down, pass, pass, punt. That's what we did. And then we came out in the second half and ran six consecutive plays on two drives after that without one bleeping run. What a freaking joke. Dude, when, I, when, I, when I was freaking out about Brian Schottenheimer being hired as offensive coordinator, this was the crap I was talking about. Look at the difference between Matt Nagy and some of the creative play calls. Oh, I don't know. Say read option. Say a screen now and then. Say a jet sweep here and there. Say a shovel pass. All that creativity that came out of somebody who thinks forward, somebody who's in the modern NFL, that is nothing that we got with Brian Schottenheimer. I couldn't be more pissed about the performance of the offense tonight because of the play calling period. Yeah. Play calling had a huge, a a, a great amount to do with this loss. And 
it also makes me wonder too, I, as we record this press conference is going on right now, I know one of the first questions has to be what happened to Chris Carson? Was he injured? Because six carries, 24 yards, averaging four yards per carry. And he didn't see the ball in in the second half at all. All we saw was Richard Penny come out and, and he did okay. I mean, 10 yard, 10 carries, 30 yards. It, it wasn't, uh, it definitely wasn't as physical as Chris Carson looked. He had a nice, you know, run of 10 yards the very first time that they decided to run the ball on first down after 14 consecutive pass plays leading up to the fourth quarter. And they give the ball to Rashad Penny. It kicks off a drive where they actually score a touchdown. Running the ball at first at that drive looks solid. And they get on the board. They get within seven points to hit Tyler Lockett in the back of the end zone. And then they, they're they able, the defense is even able to come out and shut down the Bears, get the ball right back. And Russell Wilson throws a pick to trying to, trying to force the ball to Penny on the outside. Yeah, he threw a pick right there because that was a very predictable play call. Like I, I, empty set, I, I, and the announcers were even saying, "Oh, here's Brian." And I had to laugh about look at Brian Schottenheimer, even in the fourth quarter, committed to the run game. And were they watching the other quarters? Like <laughs> the the fact that they're calling him out for being committed you. to the run game in the fourth quarter when they hadn't been committed to it for the entire game, and then they go empty set. You know, just at the time where they're going, "Oh, this would be a great time to go play action." Empty set, throw a pick out to the. To the flat. Thank you for calling out the announcers about the idea that they were committing to the run and how so much that Brian Schottenheimer was committed to the run because that couldn't be further from the freaking truth. Yeah. The way that I feel about it is a lot like this. The idea is, is that Marty Ball, remember who Brian Schottenheimer's dad is? Marty Schottenheimer. Okay. And for those of you who are too young to know, he ground and pound, played good defense, and won a bunch of freaking games. He also had a bunch of bad kickers and never won a playoff game. But that's fine. It feels like, it feels like to me, it feels like to me, Brian Schottenheimer, it, this is an act of willing defiance against his dad's legacy to not run the football. It's like, it's like, no, that's what my dad would do here. He'd run it for three yards and put us in third and three. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to go ahead and throw and go empty and have yet another incomplete pass to a guy who's running a two yard freaking flare route. What the hell? What the hell? This is unimaginative. This is just unbelievably old. It's old. All of what he is doing feels freaking old, except for the idea of running the football. To set up the pass. If you want to look at some highlights in this game, there's not many, but uh, I, I look at Chicago running the bar, ball. Jordan Howard, 14 carries, only 35 yards, averaging two and a half yards per carry. So the Seahawks defensive line able to hold the run game. Mitchell Trubisky, only 200 yards passing on the day. Uh, Shaquille Griffin, maybe single handedly keeping the Seahawks in this game with two picks in the first half. Unfortunately, the the Seahawks not able to turn those turnovers into points. No, no, it had to had to go ahead and run the ball successfully and then abandon it. Like that's what we did after every one of those turnovers. And here's the thing: the defense played their freaking heart out. That's what that's what makes me so angry about today. Is the defense played their heart out? Down Bobby Wagner, KJ Wright. I mean. Go down the freaking list. Trey Flowers, who wasn't even supposed to be starting at right corner because we supposedly have Byron Maxwell and a couple other dudes, right? right. All those dudes are gone. Trey Flowers is your emergency guy. And, and now he's not suddenly, even there. and now he's gone. And so we're, we're, we're relying on a guy, King, who was on practice squad a, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, he's on practice squad. And this defense really held the Bears in check put in impossible situations over and over again. It just is a wasted effort, a wasted, amazing effort by the defense and Ken Norton with a really good game plan. And then also too, Trubisky could have had four picks easy, Mm -hmm. easy. It's just, it's so disheartening to just see a clear answer to how this team should win. And we're supposed to go back to those roots of 2012 and 2013 and run the ball, 
Let Russell Wilson make big plays on occasion and play stout defense. We played the stout defense. We didn't run the ball. And we asked Russell Wilson to go out there and try to make throw after throw to guys that were blanket covered when his offensive line was giving up pressure up the middle play after play after play. And we wonder why there wasn't success here. Just a really, really frustrating game to watch because, you know, and it's kind of interesting. I think we heard all off season too, the people who are, are highly into statistics saying that, oh yeah, run it. Running the ball, you, you don't want to do that. Passing the ball is the most effective way to score points in the NFL. So, you know, why why even run the ball at all? Well, look at this game right here. Look at the way the Seahawks had every opportunity, if they would have run the ball, how much of a difference it made on the drives that they did. And you can see why, yes, the statistics show that, that passing is the most efficient way to score points because it does get the ball down the field consistently, you know, farther more often. But what it's not the way to pass win. The ball? You have to res- you have to respect the run and the defense when they didn't have to do that. When they could just when they knew all they had to do was go after Russell. I mean, not even not even seeing any of the read options we saw in the past. Where did that go? No read options. No screens. I mean, oh, I, I didn't saw see one, one screen. One screen over screen. the middle of the penny, yeah. and it was incomplete. No, no, I saw two screens. <laughs> and there was then. one, in, and then there was a completed you know, know, bubble no, screen was, on the outside. Yeah, it was a freaking bubble screen. <laughs> like, to come Tyler Lockett. on. Yeah. Come on. Five catches, 60 yards. He was your leading receiver on the day. Average of 12 yards per catch and the touchdown. Uh, Wilson went at him seven times and, and caught five passes. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful play to lock it in the end zone. No doubt about it. I mean, that was, that was a uh, great catch by him too, just to make just enough separation to to catch the oh, ball. He pushed off. He pushed off. It wasn't a penalty. It wasn't. It wasn't one that they would call though. It was one no, of those pushes not. that was just enough to make enough room for the ball. If if the receiver just, had been looking, he could have defended that pass. Just in honesty, that was a push off. Yeah, that was a push off. Probably not going to get called, but that's some veteran savvy there. Yeah. Russ's decision to uh, uh, to throw it to Penny uh, late in the game, bad decision, but he's also put in like the ultimate terrible circumstance. Like, it, it, so the idea is is that you're trying to get it to third manageable, right? Yeah, and you can't throw a screen, you can't run a draw, you can't you can't do none of that. You had so much time left in that game. Still, it. That was the the frustrating thing throughout the game is the the Seahawks they kept calling plays as if they were down by two touchdowns when Thank they were you. only down by seven points the entire game. Uh, yeah. I mean, up until the pick six, they were only down by seven points. They were within yeah. reach the entire game. This this entire offense played scared. It, they played scared this entire game. The play calling was scared. I mean, instead of imposing your will, as you did on the first freaking drive, let's just take the first freaking drive, okay? We get down uh, past the 50, must have been on about the 48 or so, right? It's third and two. And guess what you need to do there? All offseason, all I heard was, we're going to run the ball when everybody expects we're going to run the ball. It's third and two, cross the 50-yard line, run the freaking ball. Right. You get stopped, so what? Your star punter, Michael Dixon, will pin him back because he's an amazing stud. Oh, and then what do they do? He does pin him back at the five yard line. And then there's Quentin Jefferson offsides for five yards. Then there's a a Shaquille Griffin face mask for 15 yards, which we didn't see the replay of. Uh, And then and then they just march down the field on that entire that very first drive for the Bears. They had 25 yards and penalties. This is their best play. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there was it, there was a 17 yard run that they gave up on third down to Trubisky, and, oh, and then there was Ke- Michael Kendrick's whiff on the interception that gave up 17 yards. All of those things on that one drive. I, I'm not going to about the penalties in the sense that they were bad calls. All those were the correct call. So basically, the Seahawks gave it up on their own. By playing poorly, but with that said, I will not—not uh, not even a little bit. 
tie a noose and put it around the neck of the defense in this oh, game. Oh, no fault on the defense in this game. I mean, the one drive for them to give up seven and then they, they shut him down until late in the fourth quarter and, and the seven of the points weren't even on the defense. Exactly. This defense gave up, uh, well, uh, 17 points. 17 points, yeah. Yeah, you need to win those games. You need to win those games. I lamented the hiring of Brian Schottenheimer when it, when it, was, when it happened. This right here is the manifestation of exactly what I feared. Look at the difference between the imaginative uh, play calling between Matt Nagy and Brian Schottenheimer. Did, did somebody see in a different decade? <laughs> it, was, it was pretty clear in this game, wasn't it? Well, even yeah. uh, even Daryl Bevel's play calling looks imaginative in comparison. I know. And that's when when they fired Bevel, I was like, OK, good. Like, let's get somebody like Frank Reich, Matt Nagy, somebody from that line of thinking. Why not throw in some RPOs? Why not throw in some read option? Why not uh, throw in a, a screen or two? Nope. Can't be bothered. Can't be bothered with Brian Schottenheimer because we're going to play 1993 football. That was a joke show. It wasn't 1993 he, football, he, though. He, he, <laughs> maybe, maybe if he had a whole hat. Maybe if he had a whole hat instead of the visor, the heat would stay in on top of his head and it actually get good ideas. 1993 is, football would have been more successful in this game. I, I can't be more frustrated. Now, only, gosh, what is it, 300 yards of offense, if that? When I went on the Bears podcast, the thing that I said was I was extremely afraid of the idea that when you look at the Bears defensive roster, that you looked at the defensive line and you said, there's a bunch of ballers there. And then you looked at the secondary and said, eh, there's a bunch of guys who's okay. And they're going to bait you into the pass again and again and again. Because right now, Right now, we cannot be baited into the pass. We have to establish a Catfish. run game. And I, I said on their podcast, I don't care if the first three drives, if we go run, 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 punt, run, 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 punt, run, 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 punt, run, 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 punt. You know what we didn't do? Any of that. Any of that. I want to hear some good. I want to hear some good Catfish. excuses. Chris Carson was hurt. I don't, beyond that, I still I still don't have any excuses that make sense for that because they acted like they were down 20 freaking points when they were right in the game. Dominate the game. Do it. When it comes down to it, though, really, that interception is the difference in the game. The Bears, 20 first downs to Seahawks, 17. Third down efficiency, the Seahawks, 5 and 13. The Bears, 5 and 12. It's almost identical going down the list here. The Seahawks have 64 plays. The Bears have 63. Total yards, 276 for the Seahawks, 271 for the Bears. Total drives, the Seahawks had 12 to the Bears, 11. Passing yards, 202 for the Seahawks, 185 for the Bears. That's That's accounting for the sacks. Rushing yards, Seahawks 74, Bears 86. Penalties, five penalties for 37 yards. It was a good penalty day for the Seahawks. Seven penalties for 55 yards on the Bears. Time of possession a little bit off. 25 minutes for the Seahawks, 34 for the Bears. And the only difference is the the Bears have a defensive touchdown in the game. Let's talk about that pick six because it's the play calling that sets all of that up. Because you had some success running the football, but yet appeared reluctant to do it for whatever freaking reason. And then as far as the passing game is concerned, your offensive line can't protect worth a crap. And so basically that makes you settle down to quick outbreaking routes, quick slants, everything that's underneath. The defense knows that's coming. They know. Oh, they it's keyed coming. in on it. And the interesting thing was is that and so when that third so when that play comes up where yeah. Russ throws the pick on second down. It is predictable as catfish right? beyond words. What else is he supposed to do? The routes are called. The routes are called. What? They're all short little dink and dunk BS. I, I don't understand the thinking in, in that particular moment to go empty set. 
the lack of creativity, the unwillingness to run the ball, it's indictable. And it all came like, together I mean, in, in that like, moment. File charges against Brian Schottenheimer in this game. Well, the Seahawks go 0 and 2 for the season. Now, this I I've been saying for a while that I see the Seahawks starting out two and three. And and they could still get there. They have the Cowboys coming up, their first game at home. Hopefully, you know, coming back home, the Seahawks and bring a little energy. The Cowboys offensive line, not quite the same as it has been. They did get by the Giants. It was a 20 to three uh, in this on Sunday's game. And then they have Arizona, who looked absolutely terrible against the Rams. Well, let's talk about positives. So the Seahawks have just played two road openers for the home team. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Within one score of both those teams, uh, the defense today, they really balled out. They freaking balled out. I mean, Michael Kendricks actually looks like a quality addition for Maybe Two, one three, more game. Four games. I don't know until he goes to jail. I'm not super stoked about the signing, uh, but I, am, I understand it. I'm super stoked about the signing. When KJ Wright goes down and apparently Bobby Wagner somehow was like magically injured in the middle of the week. I don't know how that happened. I heard oh, yeah. I, I heard somebody say, oh, yeah, Bobby Wagner's kind of nicked going into this game. And I'm like, oh, oh, I wonder, you know, just hamstring or something. And then all of a sudden he's on. He's out. And we have an injury report where Doug Baldwin's out, KJ Wright's out, Bobby Wagner's out, Trey Flowers is out. What's going on? This team, I I, I texted you before uh, the game, and I said I got a real bad feeling about this, and a lot of it came down to the and the D, especially on the defense, because not having Bobby Wagner and KJ Wright out there is not something that we've seen for a long time. And yet, somehow the defense kept them in the game. The offense needs to come up with twenty four points, and they could have too, very easily. If they if that drive goes the opposite direction, instead of a pick six, they drive down and score a touchdown. Then you're counting on the that's defense to if. hold Trubisky. That's that's a big if. Well, even if it's seventeen seventeen going in, and and Russell has that final drive well, to try and make something happen. Let's say in the first happen. half. Let's say in the first half, you actually run the freaking ball more than more 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 than one time at a time. Yeah, do it twice in a row. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Call me crazy. The one time they did that, they got a first down. Huh. And then they did. I think they did it one other time when they started running it with Penny. And then they actually had a first down as well. Huh. Can't be bothered. Back to back runs. Crazy talk. I'm not that smart. And yet somehow I can see this. So who who do you lay lay the blame on? Brandon, do you lay do you lay it on Pete or do you blame it or do you lay it on Shotty? Or do you lay it on Russ? Because there's some people saying this is a Russ problem. Well, the the pick was a Russ pl- problem. He didn't have to throw that football. Where else was he supposed to throw it? <laughs> he could have kept that one in his pocket. He could have. He could have taken a sack. Taking yet another sack. I, I, a sack would have been better than the pick six. I guess, but it's it's go time. It's time to win it, and I don't want to neuter his ability to go out there and. Take a chance. Because that's what he was doing. He was taking a chance. That was not a good chance right there. They're not all good chances. (laughs) They're not all good chances. As I pointed out earlier, the the play call in that situation wasn't great either. That's exactly my point. So you put him in a crap situation, and then you're mad at him for taking the the one chance that he's been given. I think when I assign blame, I assign it to all those. I Pete Carroll, I'm not going to say that this is entirely Brian Schottenheimer's offense either because Pete Carroll has a lot to do with how his philosophy on on how he wants this to go and clearly if his philosophy is run the ball like he's told us the entire offseason and then they don't do it and that's on Pete you know I can't disagree with you on that that's why I ask you the question I mean not not that I'm putting it there I, I select D all of the above okay and and that's fair that's a, that's a fair answer. Defense not applicable. What was that on offense? This is what the early season Seahawks do to us on the road, isn't it? It's what the Seahawks do on the road all the time. Try like, and play, keep it within one score. But it was right there. This game was right freaking there. I mean, is there any... I'm going to listen to the press conferences, right? I want to hear what the... Catfish! 
Bitch. The answer is to to that question. What was wrong with Carson? And why go and away from the run? how many points were you down? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll have more perspective when we come back and talk to all y'all uh, here in the next couple days and we do the, the full show. But um, on first blush, like, my fears about Brian Schottenheimer are all real. They're, they're all coming in this game. Maybe, but- maybe we need to call up Rex Ryan to tell uh, Brian Schottenheimer to run the ball. Because apparently when Rex Ryan tells him to do that, He'll do it for 25 straight plays uh, it, until he's called off. Maybe he's been given too much freedom. I don't know. We remember that story, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, where where okay. in the offseason, Rex Ryan goes on the radio after the Seahawks make the hire of Brian Schottenheimer and talks about how, how loyal Shotty is to a fault. How loyal that going into the game, the game plan was just to run the football and Brian Schottenheimer was going to run it and run it and run it. And Rex finally had to say after they were down, I don't know, 14 points in that game. You know, we could probably make sense of passing, too. So uh, let's talk about the passing a little bit and just the pass protection. Right. Uh, we, 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 we heard we heard a lot about Khalil Mack the entire game. Really? Do, did, did, did Khalil Mack play in this game? I didn't even know he was good, but apparently he's on the Bears now, and he's a big deal. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Khalil Mack for the, for the Raiders? No, no, apparently he's on the Bears. I, it was off my wait, radar. John, I, John Gruden wouldn't have traded Khalil Mack to the to the Bears. I mean, he's no. a he's a you know all time you know all pro player in his prime. In his yeah, prime, no, the Raiders. No, no John I, Gruden. If if John Gruden would have traded Khalil Mack to the Bears for two first round draft picks, I feel like I would have heard this news. The news that I wish Jermaine Effetti had heard was when Brian Schottenheimer correctly was chipping Cleo Mack with the tight end over and over again. You saw Jermaine Effetti like basically run all the way backwards into Russell Wilson's lap and let Cleo Mack after the chip get another five yards of steam as he came at him. What the catfish are you doing? You get the chip, and your advantage is then you got the chip, you got him off balance, you go and engage him. You run towards him instead of retreating backwards, which Afedi did time and time and time again. I don't know which coach put that into the game plan, whether that's Mike Solari or Brian Schottenheimer, but that's got to be addressed. What the catfish was that uh offensive line play not great there is a third and eight where i swear the the bears blitzed about eight different guys and then russell wilson threw into triple coverage i i don't know how the numbers work out but in my mind i swear i saw that many people blitz and there were there were three guys around the football so you mean the offense is predictable and that when uh you blitz you know which the hots are apparently it was obvious in that case because they you were think? all right there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought well, when you blitzed, like there were usually multiple guys open and you could kind of throw to the open guy. And maybe that's on Russ. I just didn't see the open guys. But he didn't have a lot of time. And the frustrating thing was, was watching the Bears receivers on all their short throws actually catch the ball. Time and time again, five yard catch, like with their six hands? yard catch. Yeah, with their hands. It didn't even bounce off. Amazing. So I think why there is some blame for Russ and Schottenheimer and Pete, we didn't see a whole lot of catching either. No Doug Baldwin was a problem. Yeah. I mean, you got to think he makes two or three plays that, you know, changes the momentum here and there. I just, at the end of the day, I've been told that Chris Carson's a beast. I've watched him play for a season and two weeks now. And the first season was limited. And when he's healthy, he's a beast. Why do you not give him the ball? He retired at halftime. He may have gone full Volte Davis for for all we know. This is um, something that we did not consider. 
I assumed he was injured, but then they showed a sideline shot uh, before the uh, second to last drive, and it was Penny and and Carson sitting on the bench, and Carson was just sitting there like a dude, and like there was no trainers around him, and Russ was talking to both of them. And from here we uh, go from Greg Bell. Pete Carroll says Chris Carson got quote gassed, also playing special teams tonight, and coach wanted to see what Rashad Penny could do. Don't play him on freaking special teams. And I don't want to, I don't need to see another iota of Rashard Penny for until next season. He's not ready. Which is fine. It's totally fine, but don't play him. Wow. Playing him on special teams and that gassed him out. Okay. I think that's a good place to leave the show. (laughs) Okay. Because the uh, non-challenge flag that was through, we'll, we'll talk about that on the regular show. Because you and I have differing opinions on it, and I'm right. But, <laughs> I don't know uh, how you're right about this. Okay, let's close with this because yes, okay. early in the game, uh, a receiver stopped, kind of held up by a member of the defense. Earl Thomas comes over, punches out the football, and looks like a, a clearly the, the, the receiver was not down. The ball comes out. The officials blew the play dead, and what I heard, they blew the player down, and they said that. The, they said that the forward progress had been had been called. That's not what they said. What they said was is that he was down, and the so the fumble didn't matter. the The man blew the whistle, doing the finger point to the ground. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. And then because, the official came because, on the mic and said the ruling on the field is forward progress had stopped. <laughs> That's not what the initial uh, official ruled. That's not what he ruled because he thought he was down. He thought his ass was on the ground. Sure. Which it wasn't because it was held up by uh, the defender's leg. I know. We saw the same thing. I just yeah. know what I heard from the official the flag making the call. And once once the official says that the ruling on the field is forward progress, that that's not a challengeable play. You can't Force challenge his hand. You can't challenge a ruling of of forward progress has stopped. It can't, there, you can't challenge it. Then there's a miscommunication between the side judge and the head judge then at that point. And force his hand. Go ahead and say, all right. I mean, the second the whistle blew, I was like, he wasn't down. Throw the flag. The next play was an interception to Shaquille Griffin. So That's no excuse. The call was inconsequential. Fine, it worked out, but that's no excuse. I'm just saying there's there's nothing This was a coaching loss. Nothing Pete could have done in that situation. Does it does this game not feel like a coaching loss? It's a it's a combination. A coaching well like if yeah, play calling is coaching. This feels like a coaching loss. Credit to Ken Norton in this game though. Right. The only coach that had a shot fish together. And with that, there's only one thing left to say. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.